Good afternoon and welcome back to Asgard. So today we are going to be automating reinforced stone from IC2. So I had a request um, a little while back um, to cover automating that. So I've come up with a design um, that we're going to be using today. Um, you will want to automate your iron scaffolding creation and your CF powder, but I'm not going to cover that because that is fairly basic. It's just recipes. Um, and then of course making plates and stuff nothing too too crazy but let's go ahead and start with a water source to supply water to our canning machines um, in this case I'm just going to use a reservoir from Ender IO um, and set it to output and then we'll put our first fluid solid canning machine here and then we're going to put an export bus onto this smart cable and we're going to put a crafting card in it and tell it to let me get some CF powder actually <clears throat> and we're going to tell it to export CF powder to this and then we're going to set this to fluid and rich and you'll notice CF powder starts coming into this a little at a time now we could throw speed upgrades into that and make it faster uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right this second and then we're going to put a fluid ejector upgrade into this and also just for the sake of this tutorial you don't have to have it but we're going to go ahead and put 10 overclocker upgrades into there and then of course we're going to want to give it some power um, you know whichever method you prefer uh, I'm just going to use a creative capacitor from immersive engineering and we'll put that on there and then one of them on here and link that up. So that's going to start creating our construction foam. And then what we're going to do is let's put just a fluid conduit here and set it to extract. And then let's put another fluid canning machine right here and tell it to insert that. So the construction foam's coming in here. And let's go ahead and give this one power as well. And let's give this one an ejector upgrade. And then once again, uh, let's give it like 10 overclockers. <coughs> and now we're going to set this to fill cell from tank. And then we're going to put our first autonomous activator right here. And then we're also going to put one right here. And let's set these up. This one's going to pull from the back, which would be the fluid, uh, fluid solid canning machine. And it's going to extract out, uh, no, sorry, out this side. Um, any side, you know, it really doesn't matter, but uh, just for the way I have this set up, this will work fine. Uh, we're going to put item conduits here set this one to insert and we're going to set this one to extract always active and we're going to give it an advanced item filter and now let's get a CF sprayer and make sure it's empty and the reason we use the advanced item filter is so that we can match metadata and MBT data and we'll put that empty CF sprayer in there so now if we were to throw this CF sprayer in You'll notice that it got pumped out and then put back in here with 8,000 millibuckets of uh, the CF spray. So that way it'll keep using that until it empties, quickly throw it back in here, and it only takes a second to fill it with the overclockers, and then it's right back into the autonomous activator. And you can actually have a couple of these if you want, so that you always have one present in the, um, the autonomous activator. But as you saw, it's pretty well instantaneous, so it's not going to be too much of a concern um, if you only use one. And now let's give these power and we'll just stick those down there. Um, you could always, you know, do whatever you prefer um, as far as that goes though. And now we are going to start setting up some of the Steve's factory stuff. We are going to be using Steve's factory for this. So um, just a heads up on that. And we'll put our, what the hell? 
oh, sorry, set this to high control, <laughs> high redstone control. Um, forgot to mention that at first. Okay, so now we're good. Um, these aren't running. <laughs> and we're going to put a block gate right here. And go ahead and get an empty hand and shift right click that. And we just need one. Now you could build on this and have multiples or whatever. Um, and it would work just fine because the CF sprayer, um, say you have a block here and a block above it, a block above it, it'll cover up to 10 blocks um, as long as they're connected. Um, but you would have to have multiples of this autonomous activator. So just a heads up on that. And now this one, we're actually going to set this to just input, uh, wrong side, input um, from this direction. <coughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to run some inventory cable and we will just run it across to here and then we're going to put a uh, if I can find it here, oh right here a redstone emitter down right there between those two autonomous activators and if you recall we did set those too high um, in order to run and now let's grab a couple chests here um, we're going to use two just because it makes it easier to differentiate we're going to use a normal and a diamond um, you could use whatever um, if you wanted to just kind of as buffers and then let's go ahead and run our cabling over here and then our interface will of course go right there and just because I'm particular about it, let's set it um, to output into this chest. And then we're going to put down an item conduit here and set it to extract always active, insert, and then we're going to put um, any kind of item filter, it doesn't have to be advanced. And we're going to whitelist sand. So now all of our sand is getting pulled into this autonomous activator. And now for the fun part. <laughs> um, we're going to start with a trigger, of course. And then we're going to create a condition. And link those two up. And we're going to say, actually let's not have the trigger connected right now. So we can get it all set up and then connect it. Um, we're going to say, you're going to check the block gate. And let's see, our block gate is facing to the east, so we are going to set east. And we are going to say, <clears throat> if there's any reinforced stone, or iron scaffold. Now I know that uh, there's the construction foam like kind of in between. Um, let me grab one of these and show you for example. Um, if you use this there's this reinforced construction foam but I did notice that <clears throat> um, there's actually a setting that you can um, pull up here. Um, right here reinforced construction foam however setting that it doesn't really matter because this is also for some reason Steve's factory manager sees this also as iron scaffolding I don't know why that is but it does um, but the nice thing is this can only spray um, you know if there's only iron scaffolding there and this can only place sand if there's the reinforced construction foam which of course the sand makes it instantaneously um, turn into the reinforced stone um, like that so we're going to use sand to make it uh, a bit quicker <coughs> and of course sand is easy to automate so and so if this requires either iron if it has either iron scaffolding or reinforced stone and if that is false if there's none of that there then we are going to input from this chest um, direction doesn't matter and we are going to whitelist iron scaffolding and then we are going to output that to the block gate 
on the east side. And that pretty much covers that. Now we're going to set up a flow control here and we're going to set it up to split to two outputs. And so if this condition is true, if it has one of those blocks in there, what it's going to do is it's going to have a condition and connect that. And we're going to say <clears throat> if this block gate on the east side contains, uh, honestly you can leave it on requires all, it really doesn't matter because um, we're only going to use one item. But if it has um, reinforced stone, then it's going to input that from the block gate, target east, items, reinforced stone. And then we're going to output that to the diamond chest and you can leave all the rest of that as is. Now for our second flow control we're going to set a condition and we're going to say if this inventory on the east side contains iron scaffolding then you're going to use the redstone emitter this one and I'm going to turn that off really, really quick So we choose our one redstone emitter and we're going to leave the sides the same, output the same, and we're going to set it to a pulse for 10 ticks. Or actually what I had it set at was one second. And that's pretty much it um, for the design. So if we just plug this up um, and then of course we can hook in our interface. Uh, we'll make a pattern here really, really quick and we will say processing for one sand and one iron scaffolding it will create one reinforced stone encode that throw that in here and then of course let's just run some item conduits over to our interface and always active and insert it all right and actually you could connect your interface to your Steve's factory manager and just do it with that um, you know there's different ways that you could do that aspect of it I'm mainly wanting to cover um, the actual layout of this so now if we come over here and we were to request, say, a hundred, oh, let me grab some, let me grab some sand and some iron scaffolding. Okay. So now if we were to request our 100 reinforced stone, we come over here, oh, I forgot one thing forgot one thing sorry <laughs> let's cancel this I apologize that's the beauty of playing with Steve's factory manager it's easy to miss one little bitty thing that messes up all of it um, over here on your um, condition when it's false set your iron scaffolding to one um, specify that amount and then it should be good now so now, let's try this one more time. Uh, you'll notice we did make a little bit of reinforced stone there. But let's go ahead and request 100 of this, and we're missing... Oh yeah, the sand went in here. Okay. That won't happen anymore. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, 
order our 100 reinforced stone. So if we come over here, you'll notice that it's creating that no problem. Because what's happening is, you'll notice that this is pulsing every so often um, once it places the scaffolding. And um, what it's doing is it's quickly spraying it and then putting sand onto it and then it's getting broken. So, um, because for example, if I have um, over here, let me grab some iron scaffold. And let me grab some sand. I'll just show you why that is. If we have some iron scaffolding here, um, of course, I'm not going to be able to apply sand to that. And then um, if I spray it, oops. Okay. If I spray it, well, you get the idea. You can't spray it again, um, you know, with it being an enclosed little area like that. Um, you can only apply sand to it. So um, that's basically how you set it up. And you'll notice that we'll, we are creating about one reinforced stone every couple seconds. So <coughs> um, that way we can bypass, you know, the long time it takes to mine it. And, um, of course, the manual aspect of spraying it and doing all that stuff that's just not any fun. So... Um, that's pretty much the setup. So if you guys have any questions, as always, please call, uh, let me know in the comments or hit me up on the social media that's listed down below. And um, if you guys have any suggestions or things that you would like to see or you want to know how to automate, feel free to let me know and I will do my best to automate those and get a video out to you as soon as possible. So as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please comment, like, subscribe. It's very, very much appreciated. And until next episode, do take care, and I hope to see you guys then.